Uh, yes, please, you can go ahead. Yes, so my, my question was um, well, actually something that I, that, I, that I sort of learned was, you know, about the local church also being in heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what I what I also I mean, what I wanted to understand was um, uh, what is there any role that uh, you know the, these um, mm -hmm. you know that, that church in heaven would play mm -hmm. because I think it you know it sometimes I mean again I'm I'm just sort of uh, keep thinking aloud over here mm -hmm. this could be you know this could be misinterpreted uh, and I think it has been misinterpreted you know where people you know pray to ancestors and you know. Uh, mm. Pray that you know that they will intercede for them in uh, in heaven. Yeah, so understand yeah. what is the role uh, of you know uh, the church mm. in heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Christopher. Yeah, I know uh, some Christian circles have uh, um, this concept of praying to the ancestors uh, who were believers. Um, okay, why why did we say that uh, church? is also there in heaven see the basis for that is one scripture which is given in, in our notes uh, is from ephesians 3 verses 14 uh, and 15 it says for this reason i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named so it's very clear the whole family uh, in heaven and earth so there are those who have um, uh, slept in the Lord. You know, First Thessalonians uh, talks about it. Uh, so, yes, we have uh, our, our um, uh, I mean, people who have gone ahead of us in heaven. Now, the role which they have right now, uh, see, there are, there, there are, uh, there is a way of living in heaven right uh, and uh, there is an existence uh, with a purpose in heaven now we don't know too many details about it uh, but one main reason why what they are, one main thing that they would be doing is worshiping god okay so they would be worshiping god and whatever uh, other uh, assignments are given to them now we know when we talk about the millennial rule and reign of christ and you know the uh, the ages to come and all there will be roles assigned to every individual so uh, we don't just have a purpose while we are alive in this physical body but we also will have a purpose uh, when we move on to you know move um, like uh, uh, what do you say when we go home we we will still have a purpose so we don't know the details of that but one thing we can be clear of is that we cannot communicate right we we cannot um, reach out to those who have gone ahead of us because we don't see any reference uh, to that in scripture uh, we are only called to pray uh, to the lord jesus um, and uh, yeah we we only trust and wait in hope that we will see our loved ones. So there's no question of communicating or uh, petitioning them or, you know, uh, sort of uh, revering them with our practices here uh, on the earth. We don't, we don't see any of that. We just, we honor them and we wait in hope that we will see them once again when the Lord Jesus comes back. Uh, do, does that uh, answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Um, Just add one small point. Yes, yes, Sam, please go ahead. I think on the contrary, um, it's it's dangerous or, or even um, uh, prohibited. I, I'm, I'm thinking of Saul calling upon the spirit of Samuel uh, and how that was very wrong in the eyes of the Lord. So that's just one thing. You're on mute, Pastor. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I am so sorry. I, I, I'm not able to, <laughs> yeah, recognize when I'm on mute. Okay. So yeah, no, I was. I said thank you for adding that point and that um, example shows um, how God uh, responds to you know the these uh, uh, attempts to communicate with the dead uh, and, and all that. But uh, again, I, I don't know if we covered this when we talked about. Um, deliverance and believers authority uh, see spirits of those who are dead uh, in scripture we don't see that they can come back 
okay we just don't see that so uh, when saul called upon the spirit of samuel uh, most likely it was a demon okay who just took the form of samuel and appeared like samuel and communicated with saul but uh, whatever you know what whatever happened it was displeasing in god's sight uh, and uh, uh, we as believers you know we are not it, it's it's not right to try and communicate with the dead or have any association with the dead we just honor them and we wait in joyful anticipation that those who have slept in the lord that they will come back in the uh, come back with jesus in his during his return okay so uh, let's move forward in our um, uh, discussion here this morning we said that the church has a spiritual dimension so in the sim to understand this in the simplest way we are part of this body in a spiritual sense okay we don't see it but we are a part of it when when uh, we become a believer so we said that um, you know we we uh, when we are in christ jesus we become a part of the body of christ and that this body or this church is eternal okay uh, that uh, this spiritual entity uh, it comprises of those who are alive here on the earth and those who have gone ahead before us uh, and we also said that this spiritual entity has a purpose and uh, has been chosen by god to execute his uh, you know execute whatever he wants done on the earth so whether we uh, realize it or not we are automatically part of this spiritual entity called as the church now let's look at the natural dimension okay the things that we can see about the church the things that we can um uh, notice in the physical realm so the natural dimension of the church you know the church really is the household of god it is called as the household of god so in this passage here on page number 6 uh first timothy chapter 3 verses 14 and 15 this is when paul writes to timothy paul is uh, basically instructing uh, timothy who who is one of the overseers uh, uh, you know of the churches that uh, were established by by paul um, he is giving him instructions about how to uh, take care of the church in the right way so he uh, uses this term for the church and he says you i i'm writing to you uh, that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of god which is the church of the living god the pillar and the gr ground of truth so he is giving a description of the community of believers that meets at ephesus and he is using terms like house of god you should know how to conduct yourself in the house of god uh, you should know uh, you know how to conduct yourself in the church of the living god he says it's the pillar and the ground of truth so all these descriptors of the community of believers now if we didn't have all this in scripture we would just think oh yeah you know it's a good thing to meet together it's a good thing to to uh, work together to serve together so let's let's just do it and that's about it no but the word of god reveals to us the purpose of god in each and every one of these descriptions we are told that we are the house of god in other places the term household of faith is also used so you know you understand that it's it's something like a spiritual family okay and we will look at it in depth uh, later on because there's one entire topic only on uh, the the family of god and what it means but for now let's understand that we are a family okay though we come together as a community uh, uh, it's it's not just for a for a gathering okay but we are actually a household or a or the house of god and who is the head of this house it is the lord jesus he is the head so the pattern of uh, life that this house will have uh, will be as per what the head sets 
okay uh, and we must realize that the local church uh, and i will use the term local church okay natural dimension local church because that is that is the entity that you and i can see the people of god we interact with them and you know we recognize this this natural dimension of the church and the first part about the natural dimension is that we are the household of god we are not just a uh, uh, social uh, gathering of some sort or a, or a or a community of some sort but we are actually the household of god and we also saw terms like the church of the living god okay so the church of the living god so all this shows us that god is is um, very interested in the church uh, and uh, he is he is central to the church right and the church must have a standard uh, that comes from god that comes from the lord jesus and we are his very household okay and we must not forget that and this publication that uh, we we are using as a textbook uh, you would recall is also called the house of god okay so in the natural dimension we are the house of god we are also the church of the living god we are the physical expression of the spiritual body of christ now for the world now they wouldn't know what the spiritual church is where does the spiritual church exist you know you're saying you're you're part of the body of christ where is that body but the local church right the local church uh, uh, is that physical body and uh, you know that church is able to uh, express and uh, reveal the lord jesus in in very many ways right uh, not just to the world but even to the demonic powers so we are the expression uh, of god here on earth the local church uh, now for some of us you know we we will ask this question okay so if you say that the local church is an expression of god on the earth uh, <clears throat> what about all the denominations you know which one of those is a representation and which one of those is not okay uh, see in scripture what we see is that when we are born again right we become a part of the spiritual dimension of the church now on in this world we have lots of names describing um you know what we believe and how we do church and and all of that but honestly it doesn't uh you know for god he is not looking at all that he is only looking at the fact that you know you are part of that spiritual church of the lord jesus christ and thereby you know you here on the earth when when we live out that life we are representing uh god we are representing the body of christ okay so he only looks at us as the body of christ and we shouldn't uh divide on the basis of you know denominations and uh, um you know some sort of sects and so many things we we divide ourselves but to god he is looking at us as his body he is looking at at us as that one uh you know united united um, entity and we've talked about this earlier and we will talk about it later also uh, when god looks at the city he addresses the city wide church okay so that unity among the churches is is very very important okay and god uh, doesn't go by denominations the way we do so uh, yeah local churches but local churches must learn to work together to serve together and move forward with god together okay so uh, the local church is the natural expression of god here on the earth uh, and then a few more things that have been uh, mentioned here in our notes is that you know we as a local church uh, are the instrument that will execute Christ, execute christ purposes we've already touched on that point uh, and uh, the fact that we represent christ yes we represent him we represent his compassion we represent his justice we represent the truth 
okay uh, out there in the world there are so many standards uh, you know that that are not right but the church has to uphold the right standards the truth so we we represent god in all these ways okay and uh, we are the family of god the family of god here on the earth so the natural dimension uh, of the church comes across in this way and has all these purposes okay and that's kind of easy for us to understand uh, so because the lord jesus has instituted the church okay uh, and when i use the term the church uh, i don't necessarily mean a local church okay i mean the spiritual dimension primarily but of course if we are part of the spiritual dimension then hopefully we will be part of the natural dimension of the church as well okay so when he instituted uh, the church uh, it was important it was important it is in important it will continue to be important because the church is eternal and that's what we said so uh, do you think people need to be part of the local church they may be part of the spiritual church but uh, is it important for people to be part of a local church what is your opinion on that isn't it enough to be part of the spiritual dimension ma'am we should be yes. part of a local church yes to fulfill practically the purpose of god mm -hmm. thank mm -hmm. you ma'am yeah thank you rupa that's that's a important point there so we must be part of a local church to practically fulfill the purpose of god true true okay why what what a, what other benefit do we have in being part of the local church uh being part of a local church uh, uh, we get to learn uh, mm. truth yes uh, uh, truth uh, in the bible uh, 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 proper interpretation of uh, uh, bible Uh, verses, uh, two uh, verses. Uh, mm. uh, we are getting to know um, to celebration, to purpose uh, of uh, uh, each man mm. and woman. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, Dinesh. Yes. So uh, you know we. we will get to know the true purpose we will learn god's word we will grow in god's word we'll have the right interpretation of scripture if we are part of a, a local church uh, yes th those are also reasons why we should be part uh, of the physical body of christ uh, samuel adds uh, benefits or the intentions of being a part of a local church should be through and through okay okay so he's saying um, because i use the word benefits okay uh, so what samuel is saying is we should have the right motivation to be part of the local church we mustn't be part of the local church to get something uh, you know out of it uh, in the negative sense uh, but to 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 be what god wants you to be uh, you know you're part of the local church fine samuel that's all right um, and rupa says fellowship to work together in unity growing in the knowledge of god to love and serve okay great great so um uh, thank you everyone uh, we have already um come up with several uh, uh, right answers there so for us to live out this christian life to fulfill the purpose of god we have to be part of a local body you know it cannot be done individually now god has a call on each one of our lives and if you notice that call has to do with serving others that call has to do with working with others right that call has to do with bring the gospel to somebody so can this be done alone it cannot god intends for us to be part of the body it's only when we are part of the body that you know we can uh, use the grace of god which has been given to us we can bless others 
we can learn from others we our character will be sharpened when we um, you know grow together with other people we will mature in god when we are part of a local church when we are part of the body uh, and we see in scripture that you know uh, th there is a passage in isaiah isaiah 65 verse 8 it says new wine is found in the cluster so if you want to extract wine using one grape would be a foolish thought because you would not get enough wine out of it but when you use a cluster of grapes you can extract you know a sufficient quantity of wine and wine is representative of the anointing so while there is an anointing upon individuals there is something about the anointing on the body of christ uh, you know on the community of believers uh, and so for us to to stay away from church you know for whatever reason and not be involved uh, it's not it's not biblical at all okay and uh, uh, we must make sure that we are part of some local body now everybody has their preference everybody has uh, uh, the leading of god suggesting to them that they must be part of uh, you know a, a, a certain church and that's fine you'll be led by god but once the lord leads you uh, be planted in a church psalm 92 and verse 13 it says those who are planted in the house of the lord shall flourish in the courts of our god okay and one nice example which pastor has shared in in this chapter is he says when you look at the parts of the body they don't float around okay at any given point in time they're all attached uh, and and they function together and that is normal but if you find the hand floating away some to some place and only when you need to write you you know you somehow get it and attach it and then you do your writing uh, work uh, something would be abnormal about that individual and in the same way you know if believers are uh, not part of one community for for a um, you know prolonged period of time uh, or rather if they're not committed that that's the point i'm trying to make if they're not committed to one local body and every now and then you find people you know i i'll go to this church this sunday i'll go to another church another sunday i'll go to, you know you can't do that for very long right because then you will not be planted and if you're not planted then how will you grow uh how will you mature in the lord how will you fulfill uh, god's purpose for your life so it is important to belong to a local church uh, and to be part of that natural dimension of the church uh even though you know automatically the moment you're a believer automatically you you get your membership right i am a member of uh, even before you get your membership okay i'm a member of all people's church you're a member of the body of christ okay uh, but god's intention is for every believer to be planted in a local church as well okay uh, kennedy has added a point here he says to practice our god given authority wonderful yes so we can also do that now uh, maybe quickly now, without taking too much time uh, would you would you know re of reasons why people don't want to be part of the local body believers <laughs> there are so many okay uh, so can, can what are some things pastor yes charles yes please um some of the believers don't want to belong to a local church because they do not want responsibility Mm -hmm. uh, they don't want to be identified they want they want to remain in the hiding mm -hmm. they, they don't want to, to be identified for instance maybe they are cohabiting maybe they eloped with some other people and they know that in case they are individualized then the, the local church will rebuke them so mm -hmm. They will say, uh, me, I am going to this church. Then another time is going to this church. He's always moving around during mm -hmm. what we call spiritual transhumans. He's mm -hmm. just moving. So they are refusing to be responsible. They don't want to be corrected. That's what mm -hmm. I think. Mm 
okay okay yeah uh, yes charles uh, that, that I, i think that's true uh, for some people they don't want to take responsibility they don't want to be called out for a, a wrong um, way of living that that could be the reason why they don't want to get connected uh, with a local church um, avni has added here she says some past experience prabhakar says christ not represented accurately yeah possible maybe you know they got discouraged they went to a community and uh, that community was was not upholding the truth so they must uh, you know they must have had a disappointing experience and said okay i will not be part of any community i will i will just live for god on my own so that could have happened so yeah past experience not representing christ accurately um samuel says ego status fear of commitment fear of responsibility ungodly lives fear of being judged yes then uh, poor doctrinal teaching uh, says kennedy avni lack of true revelation of what church truly is yes that's true susan believers don't want to be in submission okay yeah yeah that's that's uh, possible then abhishek uh, church hurt and yeah correct abhishek uh, it's very unfortunate but you know uh, the when the church hurts you there's control manipulation going on all these negative things rose says unresolved offense taken from other believers yes yes yeah that could be a cause to for people not uh, being part of the church uh, so yeah we know that uh, all these reasons are there uh, but the, but you know uh, we as believers we can keep this in our in our hearts and if we come across individuals who uh, are not willing to commit because of one or more of these reasons at least we would know you know uh, how to approach them and how not to judge them but see uh, you know pray for them and see if there is anything we can say or do or you know connect connect that person to uh, the right leader in church such that uh, you know they they can overcome their hesitation and be planted in the church okay prabhakar has uh, included lack of maturity or understanding yes so these are all the reasons why uh, several people do not want to be part of the local church but we've already said that it is important to be part of the local church only then we can fulfill god's purpose uh, now let's move forward with the uh, the next chapter here uh, and this chapter emphasizes the mission the message and the methods that are used uh, uh, by the local church okay so the mission of the local church it's very very clear uh, and i told you before his ascension the lord jesus uh, he he told his disciples that they need to go and make disciples okay so matthew 28 verses 18 through 20 the great commission uh, where jesus tells them right to go and make disciples uh, uh, throughout the world this is the mission of the church and we should never forget it so why is the church still here on the earth you know now that we are born again uh, we've been saved uh, we we um, are ready to uh, actually move on to the next uh, i don't know what to call it like you know you you we're all fine if if i were to ask all of us are you at a place where um, you know if god wants you to be in heaven are you are you ready to go uh, i'm sure most of us will be like yeah it's it's cool you know i'd rather be with lord even paul said that if i'm not here uh, in in the body i am with the lord i'm present with the lord so we are happy to be with god but why are we still here god has a purpose he has a mission for the church and this mission is to preach the gospel this mission is to bring people to faith in the lord jesus christ and we should never forget that now as a church if we are not doing that then something is wrong okay so the mission of the church the spiritual uh, church the and 
the local church we the local church in the natural dimension we should be going about preaching the gospel and by preaching the gospel what do we intend to do we want to make disciples right so people get saved and then we teach them the word of god we mentor them we train them we equip them we empower them and now you know they they become disciples or in other words followers of the lord jesus and his teachings right and they go ahead and do the same thing and in this manner the church begins to grow and it begins to expand and multiply this is the mission of the church so uh, the primary purpose of the church and god's strategy is world evangelization and discipleship so that is the goal of the church and we must never uh, you know we must never uh, shift it and put something else as the primary purpose no world evangelization that is the mission of the church secondly the message of the church you know we began by saying um uh, that you know jesus said on this rock i will build my church the revelation that he is the messiah so what do we go around proclaiming as the message of the church it is the gospel about the lord jesus that he is the messiah that he has done the work of redemption and now he has salvation to offer to each and every one of us right and uh, so paul in first corinthians 1 uh, he says that i preach the gospel right it is foolishness to to some people uh, and um, you know uh, i mean he says for the greeks it, it doesn't mean anything and for the jews is it yeah for the jews also it doesn't mean anything but if even if they are not accepting of it you know i'm proud to preach the gospel so he knows that the message that has been given to him is a powerful message even if people reject it that is still the key message now we cannot change our message for acceptance maybe if we change our message you know we might have more listeners but if we do change our message we will no longer be the church of the lord jesus christ and as in we will no longer be uh, in line with the purpose that god has for the church so we can we should never change the message the message is the gospel and the gospel is about the lord jesus as the messiah okay uh, and we must go ahead and preach this message uh, i really like the book of acts if you um, uh, read the sermons uh, you know peter stands up and he preaches and paul uh, wherever wherever he has an opportunity he talks about the lord jesus he talks about his own personal testimony of how he got uh, how he encountered jesus on the road to damascus but you know there is something pure that you will observe about their sermons something pure that you will observe about their preaching their message is never diluted by other things they are always preaching christ they are always preaching christ as the messiah okay uh, and uh, no wonder uh, when peter preached one message 3000 people got saved on that day right and they they were baptized so the message of the early church was this the gospel of the lord jesus christ and we too must preserve that and we must never let that get diluted okay and that is the primary and the main message uh, that the church has been given now uh, coming to okay um, christopher says oh okay and the uh, this was an additional point to our previous discussion all right so the message of the church we said that it is the gospel now in addition to that in addition to that see we we uh, preach the gospel we bring people uh, you know pe people respond to the gospel and they uh, become believers they become part of this spiritual uh, body of christ now they need to be discipled and when we are discipling uh, the people here is the next thing that we must be careful about we must make sure that we teach sound doctrine 
okay we teach sound doctrine in acts 20 paul uses um, this uh, uh, you know he, he uses these words he says whole counsel of god for i have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of god so in discipling we must be careful to teach you know everything that god uh, the lord jesus has uh, taught us everything that scripture has to speak to us uh, and uh, we are terming this as the whole the whole counsel of god now what would be the opposite of the whole council it would be um mm, uh, you know it, it would be like uh, preaching and teaching only parts uh, or some themes in scripture and i'll just give you one example now if we if uh, i as a preacher if i only touch on grace okay if i only touch on grace my message is not wrong it's not wrong at all but you know the same bible also talks about truth so while god forgives god also wants us to walk in righteousness and uphold the truth so there, there is those two sides uh you know that that uh, two sides to to make up for right living so uh, i cannot emphasize on one and completely forego the other when i'm teaching the whole council i would need to teach it in a balanced way uh, so that the people receive it and they apply it also in a balanced way in their lives and you know they they, they are able to represent christ well and live victoriously and all of that so whole council means making sure that we touch upon everything that is important okay uh, now while discipling people here here is the other thing to keep in mind uh, that we must guard against wrong doctrine uh, in the word of god we are told that in the last days there will be lots of um, lots of uh, you know false teachers and false uh, doctrine that that will come about but as a pastor as a uh, you know uh, as as a minister of the church of the lord jesus christ in any capacity we must be careful to protect the people from wrong doctrine okay and one good way of doing this is to know the right doctrine uh, it's like uh, the example that we use about currency so if you know the original uh, note really well you can you can identify a thousand counterfeits Okay, so you don't have to do a research on those thousand counterfeits and then, you know, uh, compare it with the original and, and all of that to recognize the original because that would be, you know, uh, time consuming. But the easiest way is if you spend all your time on the original and you know what the original is, whenever anything uh, false shows up, uh, you will recognize it, you know, and you, you will not uh, subscribe to that. So same thing with the word of God. We should preach the gospel. We should preach the whole counsel uh, of the word of God to the people so that they are built up in every aspect of their lives. Okay, um, And we must also make sure that we protect them against wrong doctrine uh, and uh, false teachings. So when this is done, uh, the church can grow in a healthy way. So that would be the message of the church. What are the methods that the church is supposed to use uh, to fulfill its purpose? So there are a couple of pointers in our notes here. The first uh, pointer or the first important thing uh, when we talk about the methods that we're going to use is that it should be pure okay it should not uh, it should not be some form of manipulation or um, uh, some way of deceiving people and through that you know you're sharing the gospel you're discipling the people and you're building god's kingdom you know it, it, just just saying that sounds funny because you know one doesn't go with the other you're preaching the gospel which is a which is a message of truth and purity but if we are doing it uh, in uh, impure ways then how is it that we are serving god and how is it that you know we we are doing it uh, sincerely so we must make sure that our method is pure all right uh, uh, so some example there are 
couple of scriptures that are given here in our notes. Let me read uh, one of them for you. I'll read um, 2 Corinthians 4, verses 1 and 2. This is on page 12, uh, the bottom of page 12. Uh, it says, Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So you see that Paul is very careful about doing things the right way whether it is uh, preaching the word, he says handling the word of God you know, correctly. Then he also says uh, doing things in such a way that you are commended by others, right? And even others' uh, conscience is not um, hurt because of what you have done. So we must be very careful about the method that we use. Now, uh, example of this, yeah, okay, let me just share a kind of a silly example from my own ministry. So this one region uh, where uh, we would step out there to share the gospel on the streets because there were lots of colleges and all. So uh, I, uh, at one point, you know, we, we, we were sharing for several weeks and we had to plan something like a gathering where we could bring these, these young people uh, uh, that we had connected with for fellowship. Um, so uh, I was discussing with pastor and uh, then I was telling him that uh, pastor let's do this uh, maybe uh, on, on a Saturday uh, on a Saturday uh, like right after uh, co college finishes at one o'clock most colleges finish at one o'clock and you know students are hanging hanging around in that area how about we have our our meeting at uh, uh, 1 30 right we can give them some some uh, something to eat you know and that that will be a good way of catching these students and then we will have our meeting for some two hours or three hours and all that uh, so pastor is like listening to me and he's saying but nancy what will happen to uh, what if their parents worry and wonder you know where our kids uh, why our kids haven't come home on time today so i said no 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 need to worry about that pastor i mean let's this is the best way otherwise once they go home we can't catch them so pastor is like, I, I, I like your passion, but uh, I don't think this is the right thing to do, you know, to to kind of entice them over food and uh, catch them, you know, before they go home uh, and make sure that, you know, you're doing this repeatedly and then you're discipling people in this manner. I mean, at that point, I didn't see... Uh, anything wrong with it i i was just thinking man if we can um disciple so many young people in this area it'll it'll be a great impact uh, you know for for that particular area so that that is what i was thinking but i wasn't thinking about the way in which i wanted to uh, do this but pastor kind of helped me uh, think this through so i am just sharing a small example with, with all of you now there can be things that people do um you know, bigger things that, that people plan to do. Uh, but if it's not done in purity, and if it's not done with sincerity, then it will not glorify God. And we, we must make sure that, uh, you know, we, we uh, even what Paul wrote here, he said that commended even by the conscience of men. Okay, so even in the sight of men, whatever we do, it must be done in the right way. Okay, So use methods that are pure, not methods uh, which will deceive uh, and manipulate people. Okay, Here's the next point. Uh, the method should not be offensive. But at the same time, we don't compromise on the message. Okay, So uh, uh, what, what we are saying here is, We should not, the gospel in itself is, it can be offensive and, and people uh, may not accept it readily. That is understood. That is understood. But beyond that, we must be careful not to offend people. Now, here is the next example. 
usually in our uh, you know in 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 our planning uh, of meetings and things like that uh, and particularly you know our outreach churches when we discuss with them uh, you know sometimes when the gatherings happen they can be very very loud they can be very loud so uh, when people plan on Mm, constructing a church building or something like that we would advise them and say okay try to find an area which is non residential if possible uh, and uh, when you set things up there uh, make sure that you know you um uh, do the sound arrangement and all in such a way that it's it's not disturbing the neighborhood okay so we try to be careful about all these things because if we don't do that people would uh, would, would respond with um, mm, uh, you know they, they wouldn't like these loud meetings they wouldn't like uh, uh, christian people gathering very often and uh, uh, you know um, creating trouble for them on, on their streets and all of that so just avoid don't try to give offense even in this manner uh, small little things you know when we are careful about that we can actually uh, uh, continue to preach the message without giving offense to the people okay so um, i gave you a, a simple example there but you could think about this in other ways as well for example when we are preaching now if i use uh, if i use um, uh, some statements that put down other religions uh the gospel in itself you know is is, is uh, not accepted that easily now if i add condemning statements as part of my message right what will happen it will directly offend people and when it directly offends people no people will turn off and, and they uh, and that's not the right way to uh, share the gospel message so these kind of things you know we must be careful in uh, whether it is in our preaching or or the way we we are doing our ministry just be careful not to offend people uh, and there are many examples we'll talk about it hopefully we'll talk about it later also uh, how not to offend people uh, while doing the ministry okay then uh, in the method we must be careful about demonstrating the power of god uh, and and working by the spirit of god now we know in the ministry of jesus he taught he uh, preached he healed he demonstrated the power of the kingdom so we are following after that model so we don't just preach and teach but we we uh, earnestly press into the power of god and we demonstrate the kingdom of god uh, and you know that uh that is the right method of serving god that is the right method that the church has to represent christ then spirit directed okay uh as a church i mean this is a given we we are not here to do our own thing but we have to wait on the lord we have to receive our instruction and we have to follow uh what the spirit of god is telling us to do and once again a very good example of the spirit directing ministry uh, is in the book of acts okay and in our notes here uh, some examples are recorded you know, there is a time when the holy spirit uh, in acts chapter 8 uh, tells philip go near and overtake this chariot okay a very small suggestion which philip re uh, receives and he goes and overtakes the chariot and he finds the ethiopian eunuch in that chariot you know and then the the uh, event unfolds he shares the gospel the eunuch is reading the book of isaiah and not understanding what it is but uh, philip explains and says hey you're reading about uh, the lord jesus christ Okay, and uh, the eunuch responds to the gospel message uh, and uh, accepts the Lord Jesus. But you know what? The direction of the Holy Spirit in this case, it may seem very small and insignificant. After all, Philip heard, "Overtake that chariot." But who did he find in that chariot? He found an individual of influence. That Ethiopian eunuch. you know he had uh, he, he was um he, uh, he's a treasurer right treasurer uh, to the ethiopian um uh, uh, king or something like that and this person is the one who took the gospel to africa okay and philip had no clue when 
God told him to overtake that chariot. But what is Philip doing? Obeying the instructions of God. And as you're obeying the instructions of God, you know, sometimes we won't realize it will be very simple. God just says, okay, talk to this person or write an email to this person, send a message to this person. We're just following the direction of God. But what's happening uh, in the background? You know, God is working. God is leading. God is guiding. And God is um, teaching us, uh, you know, how to do his work, how to do the work of the ministry. And the kingdom of God is ex ex expanding uh, and his church is being built. Uh, and the last section here, it says strategic. Okay, strategic simply means doing things in a purposeful way, doing things in a timely way. We are uh, uh, doing it, you know, in an adaptable way, whatever is relevant for our times, and also being very well planned and executing things very well. Because uh, if we do a sloppy job of what God has called us to do, uh, again, you know, that that might offend some people. Uh, but above all, you know, that's not the best worship that we offer to God, isn't it? Everything must be done extremely well and done with excellence because it is our act of worship. And that's the uh, worship of the church. So we also uh, use this point uh, in, in the way we, we uh, the method that the church uses, which is being strategic. Uh, and I'm noticing here that we have run out of time. So class, what we'll do is, if you have questions uh, pertaining to what we have discussed uh, in the second session, then uh, please post it on the stream page. Okay, I will take it up over there. Uh, and uh, if you want to have uh, a discussion, then you could please remember that question and come back with it uh, for the next class. We'll have a short time of discussion and then we'll get into um, the next chapter here. OK, so yes, uh, thank you, everyone. And I really hope you are enjoying uh, the subject uh, about the house of God. OK, and God bless. Uh, you're free to join your next class. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bye for now. God bless. Bye. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank, thank you, you ma'am. Praise God. Thank you.